Many people know that Jesus Christ died, but many people do not know why he died. Jesus Christ died for the sin of mankind. Jesus knew as he created man that we have all fallen short of his glory. We have all done things that have brought shame, internal anger and negativity in our lives. And we struggle with those things. And I wanna let you know that those things lead to death. But Jesus came that you may believe in him and trust in the death that he died for your sin, that you deserve to die. You deserve to be cast into hell. You deserve to be in pain. But God experienced pain. He experienced whippings. He experienced the beating of sin that was laid upon him. Even though he did no sin, the sin of mankind was laid upon the body of Jesus Christ. Many people know this, but they have not received the forgiveness of God by faith in God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. See, it's difficult to have faith, but God is pleased by those that have faith that have not seen him. But those can read of the history, those that read his word and just believe in the word of God. He accounts it to you for righteousness. You see, there was men of God that walked the face of the earth many years before Jesus came. And God gave them a word, God gave a promise. And just by believing in the promise of God, it says that Abraham, it was accounted to him for righteousness. Even before he did anything good, that God granted Abraham righteousness because he believed. I'm here to let you know, do you believe in Jesus yes, Christ sir. as Lord and Savior? Trust in Jesus as Lord. So if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, it says, whoever receives him, to them he gave the power the right to become children of God, even to those that believe in his name. Just by believing in the name of Jesus Christ, you're given the right, you're given the adoption papers in a sense, to become a child of God. We want you to be in the household of God. We want you to be drawn away from the kingdom of darkness. We want you to be drawn away from the world that is led by the devil, the deceiver. The world, most of the world, is on the path to destruction. Most people in the world are in bondage. Most people in the world are slaves. But Jesus, the Prince of Life, the King of Kings, He humbled Himself and He came down and He has destroyed the works of darkness. He has destroyed the works of the enemy. And He now gives freedom to those who choose to trust in Him. See, Jesus is the only way the truth and the life. You must strive to enter into the straight gate. You must strive to follow Christ. It says that narrow is the gate. The, the narrow is the way and straight is the gate that leads to life. And only few people find it. Only few people find the narrow path to life because only few people choose to follow Christ. And this is what John wrote about in John chapter 1 when he says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The Word is Jesus. And John said, We have seen His glory. Glory as of the only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. And so what John saw in that mount of transfiguration, when Jesus shone like a flash of lightning, he was seeing what it talks about in Hebrews 1. That Jesus is the exact imprint of God's nature and the radiance of his glory. John saw that radiance. But what John goes on to say is that whoever received him, whoever received Jesus, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural means, not of the flesh or the will of man, but born of God. That's through, through Jesus. For those who believed in Jesus' name, he gave the right to become children of God. <laughs> but that brings up the question, who are the children of God? What this verse is saying is that those who believe in Jesus are God's children. So it's, it's a kind of a platitude that we have that, oh, we're all God's children. Well, it's true that we're all created in God's image, that God made us, stamped us with some analogy to his nature, his character, he put that in us. Because of that, we have morality. Because of that, we, we, we can understand him and we can have relationships and love and all these things that are from God's image in us. But 
There's another thing. There's a, something that has tarnished God's image in us. Thank you. And that is sin. When we sin, we basically, as it were, sold our souls to the devil. It's a funny thing to think about. You can't actually sell your soul to the devil because he already owns it. Because of our sin, we already belong to the kingdom of darkness. How you doing, sir? Did you like the gospel message? I, I have it in my heart. Bro. Okay, good deal. So, and what that means is that we are in the kingdom of darkness. As it says in Ephesians 2, following the course of the world, following the prince of the power of the air. So we're not all God's children. We're all made in His image. God so loved the world. But we are not all God's children unless we put our faith in Jesus Christ. To those who believed in Him, He gave the right to become children of God. And He did that by going to the cross. See, it's as though since we belong to the kingdom of darkness because of our sin, there was a debt that had to be paid to ransom us. There was a redemption that had to be paid. And there was also this weight of our sin that a holy God must punish. But though all of sin has fallen short of the glory of God, we are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forth as a propitiation. So Jesus put forth His life to pay for our sins. On that cross, it was as though He went through our hell. And He also ransomed us out of the kingdom of darkness. So that when we believe in Him, our sins are paid for, our debt is paid, and the righteousness of Christ is counted to us. So that God is just and the justifier. God is just and the justifier of the one who puts their faith in Jesus Christ. 